Hello, I'm Jake. I'm Eliza, and you're watching Horse Rockets. Episode 6, Educational Employment. Well, take time, do what you're gonna do, and just smile, you are gonna see it through. Your wings are gonna sprout and lift you off the ground, no, no. Take time, do what you're gonna do, just smile, you're gonna see it through. Welcome to Horse Rocket Studio in beautiful Bavaria. In this episode, we're going to talk about how homeschooling allows you the freedom to be employed and how employment has educational value. Before we start this episode, we want to say thank you to our audience. There are more than 1.5 million homeschoolers out there. Most of them don't know that this show exists. Most of the people that do know this show exists happen to be related to us. Whatever you're watching this because you're family or because you're genuinely interested, we still like to say thank you. We think that you're worth a thumbs up. And we hope you think we are too. And this episode, we're going to start a new segment, Rainy's Riddle. Then we'll get to the news and our main topic. Now it's time for Rainy's Riddle. This episode's riddle was written by one of my homeschooling friends. What's brown and sticky? Stay tuned for the answer later in the show. Back to you, Eliza. I wonder what the answer will be. The only way we're going to find out is to keep moving forward with the show. Sounds good. Now it's time for the news. Thanks, Eliza. Our story today comes from Brady Fredrickson at theledger.com out of Florida. Grady wrote a great article about the Homeschool World Series of Baseball. More information about this story is available below. This week I'm reading one of my favorite Uncle Scrooge comic books called Only a Poor Old Man. Drawn by the great Carl Parks. Now it's time for the, our main topic. Let's talk about how homeschooling allows you the freedom to be employed and educational value of employment. Different states have different rules on what can and can't be done during school hours. But for our situation, our kids are able to work whatever jobs they can get around their schoolwork. For my brother Daniel, he enjoys dog walking. For people who are at work all day, he makes about $5 a week and enjoys the time with animals. Daniel was really the first of our kids to have a separate income. When we lived in Oklahoma, Daniel was in charge of our chickens and would sell the eggs to neighbors and the co-op. It's pretty impressive for a seven-year-old. Rainy is our resident lawnmower, and Eliza has been able to earn money babysitting. One of the families I babysit for, I couldn't do it if I went to a regular school. The mom works at a for a magazine and does scrapbooking. She has me babysitting during the day so she can get caught up. This is one of the jobs I don't do for money. I'm using the time with her as a service hour towards another project at church. Each of our kids only pulls in a modest income with their money. It's enough for them to save and buy the things that they want. The younger kids usually spend their money on gum, candy, but they saved up a few things they really want. For me, I saved up over $300 to buy my phone. I'm glad I did it because now I know I can save up my money to buy other things that are even more expensive. We really appreciate the values they learn in managing their finances by having this income. Eliza, did you know that when I was in high school, they taught classes on personal finance? But looking back, it was kind of ironic because all of us were stuck in school and couldn't hold a job until the closing bell. As a preparation for babysitting, I had to take the Red Cross certification. This training is available online, and I was able to do it on my computer. Having the training makes it easier for me to do, get babysitting jobs. Because the people I babysit for know I can handle emergencies, and I can prevent them from happening before they happen. The value of proper training, the ability to budget one's time and money are all things our kids have learned from being able to work or being able to add work 
to their curriculum. Now it's time for Horace Rocket Top Five. In this part of the show, we share something that we found that's worthy of the grand status of high five them. This week's high five goes to 14 year old Maya Penn, a homeschooler. She's a business person, artist, and she's also into tech. At age four, her dad taught her to disable a computer and reassemble it. When Maya was eight years old, she started her own business. She makes hats, necklaces, scarves, and many more. She makes cartoons to show other homeschoolers different things. Maya is a very talented girl. She made over $30,000 in 2012. She's also conscious of the environment, donating 10 to 20% of her profits to causes that she believes help protect the planet. You, Maya Penn, have found worthy of the high five dome. Hi there, YouTubers. Have you figured out what's Brian sticky? The answer to today's riddle is Maestro Jumbo, please. I hope you enjoyed this little. If you've got one you'd like to share, go ahead and compliment below. This episode is produced in part of the viewers like you. No, we don't ask for a donation. We just ask you to click on our Amazon link the next time you go shopping online. The little link will tag your shopping session so a person should of what you purchase gets donated to the show. Unless you're the sort of person that reads URLs religiously, you shouldn't notice. It doesn't add a cent to your shopping experience. Dad, what are you reading this week? So this week I'm reading the 2012 ARRL Operating Manual as part of my ham radio reading. How about you, Liza? What are you reading? I'm currently reading Midnight by Erin Hunter. We've got links to both of these in the show notes below. This is boring. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Okay, I'll leave that in. We're good. We're good. We don't have enough battery life. We don't have enough battery life. We're good. And he go in a thermal as a circle. Now I can tire on a bike rolling down Columbus Street.